Proudly, we hail. City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station to bring you this story, as proudly we hail the United States Army. Our presentation is entitled, The Sergeants Disagree. Imagine two old timers, both with hash marks that reach up to their elbows, disagreeing after being buddies for years. What do they disagree about? A gangling soldier who has spent less time in the army than the sergeants have spent in the mess hall. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment. But first, young man, if you want to be the sort of man that others look up to, you'll get there fast if you can qualify to join the army. You will see a change from the very moment you put on the uniform of a United States soldier. You will not only stand straighter and taller, you will walk with the sure tread of a man who knows where he's going. Visit your local United States Army recruiting station. There's a recruiter there who will be very glad to tell you all about what's in it for you when you join the United States Army. And now, your United States Army presents the proudly we hail production, The Sergeants Disagree. Ground pound. Hi, you're a sight for sore eyes. How you been, you dirty boy? <laughs> sit down, sit down, have a cup of coffee. Sure. <laughs> Last time I saw you, let's see. Uh, uh, in Molinas, your outfit was coming back. Yeah, yeah. You were riding in a Jeep with a second Louis and you let out a yell. Yeah, and he wanted to know who the character was with the beard. He said you want to be restricted. <laughs> <laughs> I was. I was restricted to the same foxhole for five days. Hey, hey, what happened to that little girl I saw you with in Paris? The one that spoke English better than you did. Daughter, please. I'm married now. What? Mm hmm You, the best ladies' man from the old 131, married? I can't believe it. Very much married, buddy. Here's a snap. Yeah, take a look at this. <laughs> Two boys and a girl. Huh? Yeah. Girl looks like a mother, and the boy is West Point, class of 1973. Well, Brady, my boy, I got a job I like, and I'm outside most of the day. Nothing like being outside, you know. Master Sergeant Kelly, it is the truth you speak. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the fresh air every day, and I agree. Every time I get tired of a desk, bingo, I get an outside job. <laughs> it's one of the things I like about the army. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's somebody I know. Who are you looking at? Oh, no. Not him. What's the matter with him, buddy? I know the guy. He was a corporal under me once. How unlucky can we get? We both know him. The original foul boar. Whoa, 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 Brady. What'd you call him? A foul boar. Hold it, hold it, hold it. We can't be talking about the same fella. Kelly, follow this. The guy I'm talking about is about 20 mils left of the guy taking the wrapping off the cigar. Yeah, it's him all right, but I don't get this foul ball stuff. He's no foul ball. He's one Oh, of... can it. Kelly, we usually agree. I, I liked the same girls you liked. I liked the same kind of French wine you did. We rooted for the same teams. We even liked the same officers. But this guy, no, we don't, we don't see eye to eye. We're going to break our string now after all these years? Brady, there's always something people don't agree about. In this case, think. If it was anybody else I could understand, this squirt, I'm sorry, I, I, I won't go along. He sold you a bill of goods, buddy. Ah, just simmer down. I'm not taken often, and when I am taken, I remember it. That's the point. I got taken. When I knew that character over there, he was the rawest recruit in the army. I had to ship him out to some unlucky outfit, some poor outfit, expecting a real soldier. Uh-huh. Go on. I want to hear all about it. I hope he doesn't see me. I don't want to talk to him. Brady, boy, something real drastic must have happened. Sure did. I won't forget it. Well, as a matter of fact, I won't forget him either. Look, Brady, we've been friends a long time, haven't we? 
Up till now, anyway. We're going to get past now. We're going to find out why we disagree about that skinny kid over there. Somebody is wrong. You are. Brady boy, we'll see. Now, I got some time. How long can you stay? Well, as long as you can, I expect. Good. Now, Brady boy, when's the last time you saw this kid? Oh, it was, uh, 1950, Fort Benning. Uh, well, I knew him after that, so let's hear your story first. Oh, it makes me sick even to think about it. Why, well, I met this kid, Fink, when he was transferred into the company just before drill competition. I had to use him. I was short one man, so I called him to the orderly room. I liked his looks. Your name? Private Fink. I wish I had as many ribbons as you do. What? Ribbons. You've got a lot. You'll get a chance to get ribbons. I called you in here to tell you that you're on the drill team. You're to take Corporal Earnshaw's place. He's on emergency leave. Now, how are you on regular dismounted drill? What's your weak points? I've got three days to correct anything you're weak on, so tell me all about it now. Huh? Well, I was cadet colonel in ROTC before I quit college. I suppose I could get a commission. Today, I don't want your troubles. All I want to do is find out, Private Fink... Whether you can or cannot perform all drill movements precisely. Now, that's all I want to know. Sergeant Brady, I taught drill to cadets at college. You did, huh? Yes. Well, I guess i got to take you. Now, read up on some of the drills, and here's some monkey drill maneuvers we do. Read them over, memorize them. I don't have any time to practice you, so I'm depending on you. Now, if you have any doubts that you can't follow through on this, tell me. Because I won't hold it against you, now. That third ribbon there, that has the best color combination. Uh, you know what? I think men who spend a lot of time teaching recruits ought to have another ribbon. Black and blue, alternate stripes. Get out of here. <laughs> that sounds like Fink, all right. But he's sincere. Now, what happened after that? Oh, it was real fine. Was just dandy after that. Companies assembled on the field, and I could tell right off that we were the sharpest. Now, I wasn't given the commands. I turned that over to a sergeant who was plenty slick. So I just sat in the stands, chewed my knuckles, and I watched the companies come out. First, they marched past. We still looked better than the others. Then uh, a major shouted straight commands over a loudspeaker. And then I saw something. What did you see? One soldier. Just one soldier in my company was staring out of ranks. Every time the company wheeled right or left, he would look up in the stands. He was in step. He did everything right. But he was staring out of rank instead of looking straight ahead. Did the judges see him? Well, I was hoping they wouldn't. I watched them closely, and I, I thought they just maybe they hadn't caught it, you know. Then I saw who he was looking at. Celeste. Short, slim, black hair, big blue eyes. That's Celeste. She's a beaut. That was the female. Well, the third time Fink went past, the judges saw him. That was all over. We lost points. I don't know how they figured the thing, but I found out later we lost because of him. I got to him afterwards. It was in the barracks. All right, all right. Well, you did fine, and we, we should have won. Next time, I, I don't make any last-minute substitutions. I just hold it down, huh? Commanding officer wants you to know he appreciates your work. Frank? Yes, Sergeant? Come over to the orderly room. I hope you won't be too long, Sergeant. My girl's waiting. That's the dame you were goo-gooing at? Sergeant, please, she's the last girl you could call a dame. Fink, we would have won easy, except for you. Me? I didn't make a false you move. You turned your head, you looked at the stands. Your head moved like that was on a swivel. That's what you did. I ought to get you restricted. Sergeant, I must point out that nowhere in the note you gave me did it say that I couldn't look at my girl. They don't have to say that soldiers don't look at their girls. You're supposed to know you don't look at your girl. Sergeant, when a man stops looking at... Get out of here! Brady, you sure had a rough go. But that's fake, all right. However, you're wrong about it. Look, Kelly, I love you like a brother. We soldiered together for a long time. We never had any real disagreement. Kelly, I'm not finished. You know, my company usually gets the best score on the range. Yeah. Well, for years, I've been teaching kids who didn't know the difference between trigger squeeze and a handshake, and I've, I've made experts out of them. I sent fellas to national rifle matches. I coached teams that brought back cups and medals by the truckload. 
I got commendations in my file. Brady boy, you, you... that I will admit. You are the best rifle coach in the business. I am, am I? Well, you'd never thought it the day I took that basic company with Fink in it out to the range. Captain had been bragging, see. His company was going to post the best score again. When the old man brags, I produce. So out we go to the range. Now, we're a cinch to post the highest score. Who comes along but the battalion commander to look see? I have the job of being safety non-commissioned officer, so I, I patrol the line, checking positions, the sling, the grip, you know. The man directing the firing starts to go. Get ready for the 100-yard prone firing with ball ammunition, load and lock. Ready on the right. Ready on the left. Ready on the firing line. Commence firing. Bank, you're way off the bull. But I'm hitting the target, Sergeant. Bank, don't choke at a time like this. At this range, you ought to get all bulls. Oh, Sergeant, I got news for you. My eyes blur when I shoot a rifle. Blur? What do you mean, blur? It's a long story. You see, I've got normal vision except when I squint, and I squint on the rifle range. So I'm happy if I can even hit the target someplace. So we lost by a couple of points because Fink didn't hit the bullseye once. At 100 yards, lying on his stomach. Master Sergeant Brady, I must admit you have some reason for calling my boy Fink the name you do. Uh, have a cup of coffee on me. Sight of that guy just curdles my blood. Two more coffee. Brady, Fink is going to turn around in a minute. I want you to keep watching. Do I have to? Do me that much of a favor for all Lang's eyes. Okay, okay, all, all right. right. Here's your coffee. Yeah. I'll take a big slug. You'll need it. No. Easy does it, Brady. Fink is wearing a silver star. That he is. Oh, that impersonal. Hold it, now, hold it. Settle down, settle down. You sit here with that big Irish grin and you tell me to settle down. You know that the Silver Star Medal is one of the highest awards for valor? What's the matter with you? Pulse normal, respiration normal. Brady boy, I'm asking you to listen to me for a minute. It's my time. I ought to call the military police. Imagine that apology for a soldier parading around with a Silver Star. Ah, oh, Gunner, I am going to call the MPs. Take it easy. You see, you just joined Fink. I... Yeah, Celeste... Same little goo goo girl who ruined our review. Uh huh. I toss your 2020 vision over there. Notice anything? Just that he's wearing a silver star, the squirt. And she, a wedding ring. They're newlyweds. Oh, I should worry for her. She made the mistake, not me. Very newlyweds, Brady. Today, in fact. Would you cause trouble to newly newlyweds? Right. Now, Brady, are you or are you not going to listen? All right, start talking. That guy isn't going to get out of here. That's one thing I can tell you until the MPs take him out. Do me a little more favor. Keep back of those people in front of us. I don't want Fink to see us until I get a chance to tell you something. Well, that suits me. I don't want to talk to him. All right, Brady. Here we go. You are listening to the proudly we hail production, The Sergeants Disagree. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. When you were in high school, did you find that the scientific subjects had a special interest for you? Enough so that you'd like to go into the field and learn more about science? If you're a young man or young woman with this scientific curiosity, then you've had little experience in the medical field. Why don't you try your chances in the United States Army? There's a need for medical technicians in the Army, and you'll have the opportunity of learning more and more about the subject and gaining more experience. Your local United States Army recruiting station has full details for you right now. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of The Sergeants Disagree. <laughs> Now, Brady, if you'll stop glaring at Fink and listen, I'm ready to go. Go ahead, Kelly. I'm just making sure he doesn't get out of here before I get an explanation of that silver star. Just don't let him see us or it'll be over. That I doubt if he sees me. Go ahead. All right. Now, let's see. Yeah. Yeah, this kid Fink came to me in 1950 in Korea. Late in 1950. 
The outfit had been pulling back slowly. There were just too many Reds for us to handle. So we prayed for reinforcements and held on as long as we could before we pulled out. It was fight and run, stand, fight and run. And we knew that finally they'd sworn over us some dark night when we got so tired we'd let down. There were just too many of them. And too few of us, just too few. I could see my guys getting tired. Then, whatever comes after you're tired, shaky and foggy, that's, that's when your eyes are like buttons shining out of a hole. But they kept slugging away, firing and digging and shooting straight on a clutch, watching the commies keep rolling at us like waves keep rolling up on a beach. Able Jigger calling Charlie Purple. Able Jigger calling Charlie Purple. Over. Come in, Able Jigger. Over. Commies in draw to our left. We still hold Sawtooth Ridge. Request permission to withdraw to ankle bone. Over. Pull out. No artillery or air support right now. Contact us when you get set up. We can see your position. Over and out. Able Jigger calling Charlie Purple. Over. Charlie Purple here. Go ahead, Able Jigger. Over. Sir, we need ammo, water, and replacements. Over. Water, ammo, and replacements on the way. Acknowledge receipt of men. Sergeant, these are new men. Watch them when it gets hot. Over and out. <laughs> replacements. You need a whole new company. Two officers left and five sergeants. And kids coming up, brand new. Just kids. Hey, Kelly, the Reds are coming up the east slope. Half the company casualties, the rest of the men worn out, exhausted, thirsty. And the Reds still coming over the hills. It wasn't as though we couldn't outfight them. We shot straighter, we outthought them, but there were too many, just too many. And then. The reinforcements caught up to us. They were lucky things were a little quiet. Sergeant Kelly? Yeah. Well, I'm PFC Fink. I have four men here for you. They sent us up from the command post. You know, it was a swell trip over, considering. But I can't say much for the farming here. Back home, we cultivate a little differently. <laughs> but then I guess that's because we're a little scientific. Well, not that I'm inclined to brag about the farms around my home, but well, by golly, we've got a big acreage yield. Soldier. Crops is what we don't think about around here right now. This is rough. Oh, I know it. Well, that hill just behind this one almost blew me a gasket. Back home now, we circle around the hills. We don't climb them straight away like I had a time back. Sort of rough on the lungs. Just keep being happy like that, Fink. Just hold on to it. If you stay this way, I want you around. Well, what do you mean, Sarge? You'll see in a little while. Oh, you mean that when they start throwing all that scrap iron that I'll get quiet? Maybe so, maybe so. You bring any water? Oh, sure. We each carry two cans. We piled it over there. How much more is there at the command post? No more. They divided it up. This is your share. Okay, fellas. Fill your canteen and take one good swallow besides. We don't know when we can get any more. You new men. You don't get any right now. Naturally. What do you mean, naturally? Well, we kind of knew you were short, so we drank up and filled our canteens. Good thing you did. You know, men, come over here. All right, now, listen. I'm Sergeant Kelly. I'm acting platoon leader of the first platoon. Basic training was never like this. Bullets coming at you aren't aimed a couple of feet over your head. They're aimed at you. All right, now, we're in support of the other companies. At any time, the commies will catch fire again and attack. They must attack. The longer they rest, the more reinforcements we'll get. When we get enough, they'll get pushed back and they know it. So our job is to hold as hard as we can, pull out when we're told to. We don't vacate a position until we are told to. You get it? Sure, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, then. That's the way it starts. They start sloppy, but they build up and then they come in clumps and knots and gangs. They scream and they yell and they blow bugles. They try to scare you. Now you watch your squad leader. He'll know when you have to pull out, if we pull out. But if we do, don't leave anything they can use. Don't leave a wounded man. Get it? Well, there's not much else I can tell you, fellas. After ten minutes of fighting, you're a veteran. Just watch the fellas who've been through this. And remember everything you've been taught. Now, if you don't mind, I need sleep. Sergeant. Fink, I said I'm tired. Well, you ought to know, though. You know what? I'm a particularly poor shot. 
Don't tell me your troubles. That's something that should have been corrected in basic training. I'm not running a refresher course. You're in Korea, and there's little men out there who want to get us. Do the best you can. Don't waste ammunition. Well, that's the point, Sergeant. I, I don't want you to think I'm letting you down when I don't fire right away. I found out that if I wait until they're about 50 yards instead of more than that, well, my eyes don't blur. Are you trying to be funny? I'm in no mood for any wise no, 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 look, Sergeant. I, I couldn't hit a thing back at Fort Benning at 100 yards, but I found out that at 50 yards, I, I didn't squint and I could see real well. Oh, I can pop them off at 50 yards. So you won't fire till you see the whites of their eyes. Not the hero, huh? Well, I'm just telling you so that when I hold fire, you won't think I'm scared. You'll be scared. Everybody is. Brady, boy, that was my meeting with Fink. Uh, sounds like he didn't change any. I'm glad he had enough sense to tell you he couldn't shoot before you made him a sniper or something. Uh, keep back of those people in front. He's turning around. So you served in Korea with him, so that's great. But he's still a half-baked soldier. Now, uh, just keep your head behind those people and hear me out, eh? Right. Now, let's see. Uh, yeah, yeah, we were lucky. We stayed in reserve for two whole days, and then the Reds attacked. And we were alerted for a pass-through up to the ridges. Sitting still was bad, hard on the nerves. Artillery plopped in once in a while, and the new men got restless. And where was Fink? I didn't see him for a while. We were busy, believe me. And when I did see him, he was sitting in a foxhole right in front of me. He wasn't firing, but he was watching, and he looked ready. And the word came through. Evidently, the rest of the men had pulled back. Able Jigger, pull back. Over. Roger, we're moving. Out. Sergeant, I never fired a shot. Keep down and shut up. Well, I wasn't any help. You'll get your chance. Dig in there. Frank, dig in! Here they come. Charlie Purple, this is Able Jigger, over. This is Charlie Purple. Go ahead, Able Jigger. They're all around us, three sides at least. We can't help you. We're engaged. You've got to fight your way out. Roger, out. Fight our way out. I heard that, Sergeant. Now what are they doing? They had us trapped. I think they're digging in. Yeah. Yeah, they'll come all at once. Why don't we make a break for it? They won't expect it. You're right, kid, but we gotta have cover and fire. Well, I'll cover the withdrawal with any other guys. Thanks, kid. But who'd volunteer? Well, there's three of us, Sergeant. Goldman, Murphy, and me. We just talked it over. Well, it might work, but... You mightn't get out. You know that? We know it. But we want to get the other guys out. Five of them are bad off, Sarge. Yeah. All right, we move. Pass the word. When I signal you and your buddies cover and we go, make every shot count. They're about 60 yards away. If they try to come in, I get a chance to fire. And we started back. Running low, falling, getting up, running again, taking our wounded. It was a nightmare in daylight. A bad dream while awake. Behind us, we could hear the cracking of the four Browning automatic rifles we left with the three men. Once I looked back, Fink was firing now, standing half out of the foxhole, making his shots count, and I saw a red fall, and then another, and another, and another. Then I had to help carry a wounded man. I never expected to see any of them again. And then, the next morning, I was sleeping the sleep of a guy who hasn't had any for a long, long time. Sergeant? Hey, Sergeant. Mm -hmm. It's me. Fink. Uh, who? Fink? Yeah. How did you get back? Well, it wasn't easy. They couldn't get up that last little slope. Boy, you sure left us plenty of ammo. We just kept popping away. And, Sergeant, they got up to about 40 yards away, and boy, did I mow them down. It's the first time I could really see the target, the very first time. Oh, they're lousy shots, those Reds. <laughs> Fink, you know what? You'll probably get a decoration. Decoration? Oh, shucks, Sergeant. I just wanted a chance to shoot my gun. I had to wait until they got close. You see, in basic training, I never really got close very much. So, Brady-O, that's the way it was.
You mean to sit here in this in this coffee shop in broad daylight and tell me that skinny galoot over there with the silver star pinned on him actually got that legally? You heard what happened. I put him in for it, and he got it. Not only that, I was his best man at the wedding. And not only that, he's still in my company. And uh, if you look close, you'll see he's a sergeant first class. Oh, you bow-legged oyster. That's why I wanted you to stay cool. If you'd call the MPs, you'd have been in trouble. Those stripes and that silver star are his. Yeah, uh-oh. He's seen us. Here he comes. Hey, Sergeant Kelly, how long have you been... Oh, Sergeant Brady, I haven't seen you since... Since you were a private. Yeah, that's right. Brady, forget it. He proved himself. Make up. Okay, all right. I didn't know you two knew one another. Oh, we didn't know. We both knew you. Well, how'd you find out? Uh, by accident. Fink, I want to congratulate you. Kelly told me about your exploits in Korea. I, I think you did a great job. Well, gee, thanks, Brady. Hello, everybody. Uh, I... Mrs. Fink, this is Sergeant Brady. Sergeant Brady, I know all about you. Me? You do? Of course. Georgie here told me. <laughs> I'll bet it was good. It huh? was. May I tell him? Yeah, go ahead. Well, he told me that you and Sergeant Kelly are the two best sergeants in the United States Army. And, oh, now, wait a minute. Uh, he told me that if you hadn't trained him as well as you did, he never would have been able to get promoted so fast or get the Silver Star. He did? Me? He certainly did. And I want to add something. You see, I was here when there was a little fuss about Georgie, the parade and the rifle competition and all that. Oh, well. And I saw that it didn't keep you from teaching him everything he should know. Oh, sometimes I thought you were sort of rough, but now I know you had to be. You had to make sure he could take care of himself when it was time. Well, thank you, Mrs. Fink. <laughs> I'd uh, like to have both you fellows over to the house tonight. Please come. We'd be happy to. Good. See you there. About eight, huh? I'll see you. Come on, dear. Well, all right. So I've been given a lesson. Yes, you have. Who would have thought it, huh? <laughs> Thanks for keeping the reins on me until I heard it out. You know, you always were in a hurry. Remember the time in Munich when the red-haired sergeant from the tent told you off, huh? Boy, <laughs> do I remember that. You sat there and grinned during the whole yeah, argument, yeah. and I got confused, <laughs> and I forgot what the argument That's was right. all about. <laughs> I've always found it to be true that a man with an eye to the future makes a good soldier. That's why so many bright young men and women are joining the United States Army now. For Army life is an exciting career and there's always plenty of room at the top. Today, American soldiers get the finest technical training in the world. Every man is a specialist, a master at his job. The Army needs healthy, intelligent men and women volunteers from 18 to 34. If you've got what it takes, think seriously about an Army career. Get all the facts about what the Army has to offer you. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army. This is Ralph Rowland speaking, inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail.